train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned North Western Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. Goods work, the lifeblood of any railway. While it's true passenger services are important to a company's public image, it's also true that a railway derives the majority of its revenue from freight services. Factories, mines and other industries will often utilize trains to transport their goods due to our efficiency and our affordability when compared to those services offered by the roads. And as I mentioned last time, our goods work covered our losses when our passenger fares dried up following Gordon and James's mishaps with the Express. What I didn't mention was that Henry was the primary reason why we were able to stay afloat. When it came to passenger trains, admittedly, we in the Middies were on equal footing in terms of capability, but Henry was the reason why we always held the upper hand in goods work. This is quite remarkable considering the somewhat sad origins of our number three. He was built in 1919 off of plans stolen from Sir Nigel Gresley, the man who would become the chief engineer for the LNER. A cross between an LNER A1 and a GNR C1 Atlantic, he had a potentially strong pulling power, but a woefully inadequate sized firebox. This meant he always had trouble building up and maintaining steam, causing him to break down on numerous occasions. The men who stole the plans were eventually arrested and when the LNER's board of directors discovered the fruits of their ill-gotten labours, they were admittedly impressed, as they saw enormous potential in this hybrid engine. But before he could be of any use, he would need a complete overhaul. This was how he came to be on Sodor, where he was given such an upgrade. Now fitted with a properly sized firebox, his true potential was reached. He became our heavy goods engine, much to the dismay of the middies who lacked such a figure in their fleet. As such, they often had to juggle the goods work between them, often double or triple heading the larger trains. More often than not, Donald and Douglas were the ones who handled the Midi's goods work. Unlike most of the engines in the Midi's fleet, the Caledonian twins were actually quite pleasant chaps you could hold a conversation with. However, James and Douglas did not like each other in the slightest, but that's a story for another day. The pair even got along relatively well with Henry, at least sometimes. Most of the time, however, they were just as adversarial as Gordon and Reginald. It all started with one of Henry's usual late night goods runs to Barrow. As always, he dropped off his train on time and picked up another one for the return journey. Also like always, he was quick to leave the yard for it lay right next to the scrapyard, a place that gives all engines the willies. Our number three made good time on his return trip to Napford. Upon crossing the viaduct, he spotted a certain pair of Scottish twins whose faces were as long as the train behind them. I'm sorry to say this would be one of those occasions where the trio were not civil towards each other. Even there, lads. Having a spot of bother, are we? It's none of your concern, Henry. Aye, you just toddle off. You sure you don't need a helping buffer? Maybe a wee push to get you started? Sure looks like you could use it. No, thank you. All right. If you should change your minds, I'll be back at Napper to sleep in my shed. Night, lads. Oh, I'd like to give him what for. He's not worth the trouble, Donny. I'm not so sure about that, Dougie. Ach, he'll get his. Remember what Mr. Zorro said about our new arrival? Oh, aye. That's this week, isn't it? I believe so. Let's see how high and mighty Henry is when he arrives. A few days later, something very peculiar happened at Lower Napford, where Thomas and Toby were sleeping after a hard night at Ellsbridge Harbour. I'm sure they were enjoying their rest when suddenly... What was that? I don't know, but wait! Over there! (laughs) 
I didn't see the engine, did you? No, and I didn't recognise the whistle. I'll tell you what, judging from the sound, there must have been close to 30 trucks in that train. Even Henry would be hard-pressed to pull that many. Ugh, I hate to say it, but maybe the Middies got themselves a new addition. Why the Middies? Why not us? Because if we were the ones to get a new recruit, Mr. Starr would have surely said something. Ugh, I hate it when you're right, Toby. And right, Toby was. Not long after, we discovered the engine was indeed the Midi's new heavy goods engine, a Stania 8F named Peter. To be frank, this was a day we should have seen coming. Ever since 1935, the LMS had been churning out 8Fs from its workshop at Crewe to serve as its primary heavy goods engine, so it was only a matter of time before one ended up on Sodor. And my word, did he make an impact on the island's goods industry. Because of his robust design, he was able to pull trains of immense scale, often single-handed. Needless to say, Henry was none too thrilled and worked himself hard to meet this new competition. Unfortunately, Peter's efforts turned the goods industry in the Midi's favour and we began losing contracts to them. To make matters worse, as I would discover, Peter was a very pleasant chap. That day started off like any other. I woke up fresh as a daisy ready to take out the first commuter service. After being cold and watered, I picked up my train and off I went. All was going well as I carried down the main line until I reached Lower Knapford where I started feeling sick. I would later find out I had taken on some bad water that was slowly clogging my pipes. It was a struggle for me to reach the next few stations and as I approached Wellsworth, I dreaded what lay beyond. Gordon's Hill, as the Preston Incline had been renamed following our number four's breakdown upon it. Just as a side note, he wasn't too happy when he heard about this, unlike the rest of us. But as I approached the incline, in the condition that I was in, I sometimes wonder if it might have been dubbed Edwards Hill if I had tried to climb it. Thankfully, I would be spared such humiliation. Okay, Edward, you've struggled long enough, but I think it's time to call it quits. No, no, Harry, I'm fine. Just give me a moment to catch my breath. You've been hard at it since Ellsbridge, Edward. Don't think I haven't noticed. Well, it's not like we have a lot of options now, do we? Wrong. We can have someone else take this train. No, we can't. We can't afford any delays. Not when our reputation is as brittle as it is. And if you should clunk out on the hill, what will that do to our reputation? Face it, Edward. You won't be going anywhere else today. Bother. Pardon me. Uh, is something wrong? Uh, Edward, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Don't mind me, I'm just a little flustered. You look beyond flustered, Edward. Oh, he is. He's ill and he's stubborn. A dangerous mix. I have to get this train to Crovin's Gate. Scarloe will be waiting. Crovin's Gate? I've got to pass through there on my way to Barrow. How about I pull you along? Pull me along? As well as your train and mine? You can't be that strong, surely. <laughs> I'll do it solo if I have to. But do you think you can muster any steam? Certainly. I have plenty. Brill. You give what you've got, together we should make it over the hill, no worries. Well, um, all right, I'm willing to give it a go. Great, I'll get into position and we'll get rolling. Huh, what a nice chap. I'll admit, I was sceptical about how well this would work, as I really didn't think Peter would be strong enough to pull such a massive train. But I didn't really have a choice. You ready back there? Ready! Without delay, Peter surged forward and I took off after him with all the resistance of an empty truck. All I could do was trail behind him, utterly gobsmacked by his strength. Hey, what's he doing? Here it comes! Give me all you got! Right! You see? Nothing to it! Well done, old boy! Will you be all right from here, Edward? Absolutely fine, Peter. Thank you very much. No worries. Take care. Well, good morning, Scarlowy. Uh, 
Good morning, Edward. What was that about? Why was Peter pulling you? Oh, I wasn't feeling too well, so he helped me get over Gordon's Hill, and then some. That was very generous of him. Too right. I tell you what, my opinion of the Midis is at an all-time high thanks to him. Good to hear. With so many of you sharing the same tracks, it's about time you learn to get along. True words were never spoken. Morning, Diesel. Ah, Peter. There you are. Where were you last night? Barrow. The lift bridge malfunctioned, so I had to spend the night on the mainland. Oh, that's a relief. I thought maybe you'd gone over to the Nor'easters. Why would I do that? Colin told me he saw you helping Edward. Are you off your nut? What's wrong with that? Peter, maybe you don't understand how business works, but you don't get ahead by helping out the competition. Hang about. Didn't Colin once help out a Nor'easter? There's a world of difference between letting an engine get blown up and leaving a museum piece like Edward to rust in place. That's your reason? I shouldn't have helped him because he's old? Brilliant logic, Diesel. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, morning, sir. Good morning, Mrs. O. So, Peter, you helped Edward yesterday, did you? Um, yes, sir. Oh, you're in for it now. Not quite. Congratulations, Peter. Excuse me, sir. Congratulations, sir. Indeed. Turns out one of the passengers on Edward's train yesterday was a reporter for the Sodor Tribute, who wrote a glowing article about your run between Wellsworth and Crovens Gate, going on at length about the selflessness at which you helped the, quote, old iron engine. This is marvellous. You can't buy this kind of PR. With respect, sir, I didn't do it for the publicity. I did it because it was the right thing. Right, right. Of course you did. Just make sure to repeat that if any reporters come asking. Keep up the good work. What were you saying, Diesel? Gah! I wish I could say Diesel was the only angry engine on the island that day, but I wasn't too overjoyed after one of the workmen showed me the latest issue of the Sodor Tribute and a certain article it contained. I took extreme issue with the upstart reporter calling me Old Iron. Even if I was in my late 40s at this time, which was old for an engine, that didn't justify using such slander. Nonetheless, the article had the unintentional benefit of bringing back some of our passengers as they were apparently impressed by my willingness to press on in spite of my wretched health. Unfortunately, that article also benefited the middies as it showcased Peter's strength in vivid detail. As such, we continued losing ground to the LMS and were reduced to a handful of loyal goods clients. The quarry, the dairy and the coal mine, that's all we've got left. This is ridiculous. I blame that wretched Sodor Tribute. Oh, don't you start, James. You're just sore because they wrote about your breakdown with the Express. Too right I am. Because of them, my guard got dragged before an inquiry for apparent recklessness. Never mind the fact his idea blooming worked. It's an outrage, James, but it's one we'll have to focus on another time. Aye, besides we've been losing ground to the middies ever since Peter showed up. It's got nothing to do with the Tribute. There has to be something we can do. Like what? None of us can match Peter's strength, not even Henry, and we can't work any harder than we already are. Again, neither can Henry. That hasn't stopped him from trying. Henry is running himself ragged, and I'm not enjoying a single second of it. Blimey, Henry, you look terrible. Ugh, I feel as green as my paintwork. If you keep this up, you'll knock yourself to bits, Henry. And what's the alternative, Percy? Do I just sit idly by and let that wretched 8F take away on my trains? Maybe I should hire myself to the scrapyard since I've become so worthless. No one is saying you're worthless, Henry. And no one blames you for our losses. Ugh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap. <sighs> Look, I overheard what James was saying, and he's right. What else can we do other than what we've been doing? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. That man has remarkably good timing. All right, let's skip the formalities and get straight down to business. First off, I appreciate how hard you've all been working. You've all done exceptionally well, but it's abundantly clear to me that you need help. To that end, I've arranged for another engine to join us here on Sodor. Another engine, sir? What sort, sir? Heavy goods? Not heavy goods, 
but he does specialize in freight. According to his supervisors on the mainland, he's one of the best. What's his name, sir? Eric. He'll be arriving tomorrow, and I've told him to report to the oil depot. Fortunately, I've been able to keep hold of that client. Oh, thank you, sir. We need all the help we can get. It's no problem, Henry. You deserve it. You all do. There isn't a director in all of the Empire who's more proud of his engines than I am right now. Good night, everyone. A new engine! How exciting! Oh, we didn't ask what class he is. As long as he's helpful, who really cares? With that sentiment in mind, we all fell asleep smiling. The Lower Napford Oil Depot was another project built under the auspices of the Sodor Construction Scheme. On a regular basis, we would deliver crude oil and petrol about the island. On this day, a large shipment of both needed to be delivered to Napford Harbour for export to the mainland. Oi, James, those tankers full yet? Almost. They had to fix a leak in the pipes first before they could start pumping. Did they fix it with bootlaces too? Oh, ha ha, very funny, Thomas. I thought so. Ha ha ha. Alright, there we are. I gotta say, this has to be the biggest order of petrol we've filled yet. It's hardly surprising. It seems like every week there are more and more cars on the roads. They reckon it won't be long before every household in England has one. Maybe even two. Two? Blimey. And let's not forget the growing number of lorries rambling about. I gotta say, the increase in road traffic has me a little nervous. I wouldn't worry about it. Even if it gets to the point where every person is driving. I still think trains will have a place in the world. Huh, I guess time will tell if you're right. Ah, James, listen. I just got a call from Mr. Starr and he needs you at Carlton right away. Why? Is something wrong? There's a goods train that Percy was meant to take, but he's been delayed. It's essential it goes out today. Hang about. I need James here. I can't handle this lot on my own. There's no point arguing about it, Thomas. Or rather, not with Mr. Starr. <sighs> I guess. You'll manage. You always do. Good luck. Manage? Between these trucks and those tankers, I'm looking at close to a dozen trips. I don't see that we have much of a choice, Thomas. We don't, but still... Hold up. Whose whistle was that? Hello! I'm Eric. You must be Thomas. Real nice to meet you. Um, yeah, that's me. Thomas. You alright there, Thomas? Sorry, it's just... Mr. Starr told us we were getting a new goods engine, but he didn't say you were a tank engine. Do you really take goods trains? All the time, and always on time. Huh, that's catchy. Thanks, I made that up. Well, I'm glad you're here because all this needs to go to Napa Harbour. Alright, let's get them coupled up and... Hold up. Do you mean all of them? Of course. Why make a dozen trips when we can just do one? Can you pull this lot on your own? Maybe, but I figure we can double-head it. You can show me the way to Napford then. Huh, I like the way you think, and so will Mr. Starr. Cheers. Well, let's get to it then, eh? Too right. All right, here we go. Whoa! Blimey! You work fast, don't you? Like my old manager said, first, first, and faster still. Well, Mr. Star does value speed, but he values safety and efficiency more. Thanks. I remember that. Wow, that was incredible. I can't believe how fast we got here. Great work. Thanks. Hello, Thomas. I see you've made a friend. Yep. Eric, meet Toby. Hello, Toby. You're Eric? Really? I already went through the tank engine bit, Toby. I see. Well, tank engine or not, you've made a very good first impression. Cheers. In turn, we all made our acquaintances with Eric. He became firm friends with us all, especially Henry who was thrilled to be working alongside another dedicated goods engine. Thanks to their combined efforts, we slowly reclaimed some of our lost clients and even made new ones. Mr. Star was very right to bring Eric into our ranks. He became a real asset, especially on the branch line. But that's a story for another day.